being here, we're going to provide an update to the downtown team program that was implemented this past September. Um, overall, we've seen a 6% decline in crime overall downtown. And there's some other categories that you received in the press release just showing the exact decrease that we've seen. So I'm going to hand it over to Mayor Keller to get more into that. So a uh, couple of things I want to touch on today, and, and I just want to acknowledge the, it's super bright. So it's a beautiful day, but uh, it's also just right, right there in my face. So I'm going to do my best here. In fact, I'm going to have to close this. Um, so first though, I do want to talk for a minute just, just about what's happened in Farmington. And I know that we've all been following this story. Uh, you know, first and foremost, of course, we, we've had tragedies, unfortunately, in our town. And I say that because our hearts truly are with those in Farmington. We, we do feel, uh, we know what they feel like and how terrible it is, whether it's the victims or it's the community or it's even law enforcement. These situations are horrific and no town is immune. We know what happened in Aztec. I remember going up there as a state legislature, legislator to learn about the measures they had taken and so forth. Of course, in the nearby town, we know what's happened here, whether it's West Mesa or Washington Middle School or what happened with our officers um, in, in the Heights when they were wounded. And, and look, not too long ago, it was almost the same situation up in Chelwood Park. Of course, the individual was stationary, so it was it was fortunately a little less. Uh, I mean, look, they're all traumatic, and they're all things that we should never, ever sort of assume is normal or the way it is. And so, we're there to help. We have reached out. Uh, I have been in conversations with their mayor about uh, just a couple of different things. He's obviously, I think, doing a great job leading their city during a difficult time. But I know our police departments have also been in touch. And for us too, we want to acknowledge that as difficult as things are in our town even with respect to things like OISs or uses of force, it is very important to remember, both in Farmington and in many situations, not all but many, Additional lives are saved because law enforcement steps in and they make a judgment call that they need to do what they need to do to prevent further loss of life. I believe that was the case in Farmington and I'm grateful for the law enforcement officers who did that. And I also know that many times, many times, each and every day, even last week in Albuquerque, our officers step in again so that further civilian life is not lost. And so when we talk about OISs and we talk about shootings, I also want us to remember what's behind that badge and what's behind the logic in that decision making. It is truly to help prevent any more loss of life. So uh, with that, I, I think the chief might maybe, why don't you touch on this now and then we'll return to, to the team situation. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, like Mayor stated, uh, <clears throat> You know, our hearts are with the Farmington community and everything that they've been through. Uh, early on, we were in contact with their police department and offered any resource that they may need. But, you know, above all, as we go through and we speak about teams and what we did downtown, there was that same violence that is spreading across our country that led us to make bold decisions and change the way we do business as a police department and also make us think outside the box as to how we were going to uh, work downtown and how we're going to add a level of safety. Uh, there is no perfect safety plan, but I think today is a, is a great reminder of how uh, we've had to make changes uh, because of what Farmington has gone through and what the rest of this country is going through. Okay, and with that, look, we're going to continue talking about gun violence as we do in general in Albuquerque, and I think you're going to hear some of that in the state of the city. We have some plans that we're working on. But let's get back to downtown and to the team uh, project. So uh, a couple of things. It was uh, not too long ago when, as Chief mentioned, we did. We were just, we, like Albuquerque and downtown, we were tired of the violence downtown. And our administration got together with APD and we said, you know, what is something meaningfully different we can do? 
not a token effort, not a weekend thing. How can we enforce laws better downtown in a situation of limited resources, right? Because look, the answer is always, well, if we had more folks doing X, Y, and Z, of course we would do it. So what we came across in consultation with the community, the community asked us, in fact, business owners of this building, business owners of many of the buildings that you see behind you and mom and pop shops that work, shops that work every day downtown, they said, they said, we want more enforcement of laws downtown on Friday and Saturday. That's what they told us. And we said, all right, how can we do it? I remember meeting literally in New York Pizza on the first meeting on this. And they said, they will help. They said, if your problem is resources, we will step up and we'll pay for it. And they did. And so we're grateful to all the businesses who have invested in the team program. Now, as you may remember, this is nothing different than Chiefs Overtime that we would do at Walmart or Target. But we said, instead of supporting big boxes, we're gonna allocate those resources downtown and we're gonna support our downtown businesses. And they, like those big boxes would, would pitch in for Chiefs over time. So that's how team was born. But the key element in this is, it is about enforcement. We still have a downtown unit. We have a downtown police district. Their job is to do this 24 seven. And they'll tell you about what they're doing. This is something different. This is an extra effort in the weekends and evenings because there's so many people pouring into downtown to make sure that we can try and make this a safer place. And so I think right now we are seeing early indications that this is helping. I think it is acknowledged now that downtown feels a little bit safer. Does it have a long way to go? Absolutely. Do we have a long way to go in general? Absolutely. But I do want to acknowledge that so far we think this is having an impact and we have some statistics to help explain why. So our commitment to downtown does start with public safety. It has been in collaboration and partnership with the businesses, so we appreciate them. And this additional police presence has, we believed, made downtown safer. Still not as safe as it needs to be. But we have eight officers down here on overtime, thanks to team, but they're doing different things. They might be undercover in bars. They might be running license plates. They might be checking speeders. They might be uh, doing uh, some other sort of activities with respect to watching out for narcotics trafficking in the alleys. And then on top of that, we're investing in the built environment downtown. We are adding dozens of lights and we've added spot street lights to light up the alleys and make it safer for when people are walking back and forth to their cars. We're experimenting with how the dynamic works when the bars close and people spill out onto the street and they're starving and they want to get a hot dog. Believe it or not, as you know, this is a big issue downtown. It was even a big issue when I was a kid downtown. And so we are working on all the little details, what we do with parking lots, where food trucks are, what the hours of operation are, what streets we close. And we're going to continue to doing that over the, to continue to do that over the summer and continue to make progress. So overall, I want to share that we have seen a statistical decrease in overall crime in the last eight months since the program started. And we also have a litany of arrests, citations, stolen cars, you name it, that we're gonna go over to demonstrate and show how downtown is becoming safer. That is a good segue to our chief of police, inexplicably out of uniform, Chief Harold Medina. Just kidding. Uh, I just wanna thank everybody for being here today. It was about one year ago that uh, I got a phone call at three in the morning from a field uh, lieutenant who was explaining to me, he's like, chief, we need some help. Uh, just I can't get a hold of my deputy chief and there's just chaos uh, he goes we've had several cars drive by fire shots and I think the last shot spotter count I had gotten was somewhere over, a little over a hundred shots had been fired in the downtown area over a period of two hours fast forward a couple weeks we have a homicide at the, in the area of uh, 4th and Central and a police car was struck by gunfire and uh, we knew we needed to do something different. We knew we needed to think outside the box, but we also knew that we had limited resources, that there just was an abundance of officers to throw into the downtown area. And I wanna thank the mayor, the administration for making a tough decision and supporting tough decisions because we knew that there would be a little pushback from the big box industry as we eliminated chiefs overtime at big box stores. 
but I knew if we didn't do that, we would not have enough officers to fill the overtime positions downtown. And we made the priority downtown. And uh, in that alone, uh, there were some tough decisions because there were other parts of town that asked, well, why downtown? But I felt strongly, the mayor felt strongly, everybody felt strongly that downtown was the place that we needed to go. And we implemented this overtime project. But we also recognized that it just wasn't about violent crime. Uh, yes, uh, we had violent crime occurring on Friday and Saturday nights from 1.30 in the morning till 3. But on Sunday evenings, the amount of complaints about loud exhausts, cars racing up and down Central, and problems with individuals in the downtown area was just, just as concerning. And during the week, we had complaints from business owners about some of the unhoused and quality of life issues. And while we're not perfect on every single topic, we really thought through what teams would look like and how it would give a menu type uh, of activities that our officers would be conducting downtown. So I'm incredibly proud and happy with uh, several aspects of this, not just the statistical decrease in crime and a lot of things that we're seeing, but the way that our officers have stepped up to be community policing officers and how every downtown business knows who our downtown public safety officers are. And the input we get from them, uh, Mayor and myself actually came out one Friday night, walked downtown, and we took their advice where we should put more cameras. And we installed more cameras in the downtown area and we worked to hear their voice. And they've done a wonderful job in protecting downtown and they've done a wonderful job in building relationships with downtown businesses to ensure that those business owners know that they know the cop on their beat and that that officer is there to help them. Uh, shootings, we've seen a 50% decrease. Uh, we've uh, seen auto burglaries, 42% decrease. Auto theft, 34% decrease. And while these numbers are huge, we know there is still much work. And uh, we will continue to work the team overtime concept to ensure that we're putting resources in the proper place and that we're making individuals feel comfortable to go back town. Uh, there are some great announcements we'll be making in the near future. We are looking at creative ways to ensure that we limit firearms in the downtown area and do our part to help reduce this violent crime trend that has plagued this country with the availability of guns and alcohol at certain times of the, of, uh, the day. Uh, the program uh, is working. Uh, we're seeing results and uh, we're excited for its continued uh, effect in the downtown area and it clearly shows that we have put a priority in making downtown a safe place uh, for the residents of Albuquerque to go to. Thank you. All right, and also to provide some more details on this, uh, we're going to have uh, Lieutenant Sanchez. Thank you, Mayor. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. I'm a uh... Lieutenant Jose Sanchez and I'm with the downtown unit. Um, first of all, I would just want to take, thank all the community members for uh, their support um, in helping us address the issues downtown. Um, so what the teams has done for us is they've uh, allowed my officers, the downtown unit, along with the, the additional specialized units to come downtown, free themselves up from daily uh, calls to, for service um, response to being proactive, addressing parking lots, addressing traffic issues, noise violations, things of that nature. Um, about a week ago, we've uh, we had a few officers that were out on patrol, and again, with the with more time and more support from all the investigative units, um, they were doing proactive work. And they were able to seize uh, approximately seven pounds of fentanyl um, by doing proactive work. And here in a moment, I'll show you a picture of what that looks like. Um, but that's some of the stuff that we're doing. The teams, uh, over time, it's not out of the blue. We uh, we bring in the specialized units to assist and uh, officers, volunteer officers to come and work this uh, based off of uh, data. So we pick our, uh, and, and Commander Wheeler is great about doing this. He'll look at data and determine what days of the week we're gonna uh, use the teams over time to, uh, pay attention to downtown and but most of the time it's Friday and uh, Saturdays every uh, every once in a while there'll be a Sunday as well but again it's all data driven so and I'll show you a couple of pictures that yeah, it's uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see these really well but a little windy up here so here's a picture of about what seven pounds of uh, 
fentanyl looks like with cash that was seized off uh, from the value command on a on some proactive work responding to a vehicle crash. Here's another picture of just a, an officer engaging in proactive activity uh, just off of Central. Vehicles blocking traffic, um, preventing movement of, uh, of uh, just traffic flow. Okay, we have cash, fentanyl, cocaine. So that's some of the stuff that Teams has allowed, allowed us to do. On top of that, we, uh, uh, we have built great relationships with uh, our business owners, our community members, our partners down here. My officers are pretty much on a one-on-one -on -one basis with a lot of the uh, business owners. I have directed them to share their contact information for any issue that might come up or any issue that might we might be able to follow up on. Um, I think uh, that's it. We do have cameras. I mean, thank you to the administration. They're working uh, um, with the communities. We've got cameras at parking structures. We've got the license plate reader at two separate locations, one just outside the downtown area and one at Lomas and um, Correction Central and Broadway. Um, so that's some of that technology that's also amplifying the uh, the support and the uh, the proactiveness for, for addressing stuff downtown. Chief, anything else? You know, one thing on the cameras, I do want to thank our federal delegation. Uh, Senator Lujan and Heinrich have been instrumental in helping us with cameras through some of our federal funding. Uh, they assisted us and were able to camera downtown. Uh, our next step is uh, Knob Hill. And then after that, we're going to be looking at West Central. So, little credit for the people who help us. Any questions? Matt? Yes. Sir. Or Peter? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can go ahead, Peter. Sure. Okay, so between Teams and the LPRs, the cameras, you mentioned, of course, all the lighting. Why are you so sure that Teams was the, the key ingredient there in this uh, statistical drop? You know, there's a variety of re there There is not just one thing that makes a project work and some things don't work without others and I guarantee you uh, cameras alone ain't going to fix the problem, LPRs alone aren't going to fix the problem, uh, increased officers with enforcement is going to help and we've talked about that. We found ways to supplement the number of officers across the department and get others to help them do more work and carry a bigger load but I don't think any of us have ever said that less officers and technology alone has increased effectiveness and it's no different here than any other unit within the department. Uh, how much funding did businesses get over? It was just under 150, I believe 147,000. Yeah, it's in the release but I believe it's 147,000. We have enough to get through the year and into the next year. Do you know exactly the amount we have left towards overtime? Yeah, eight months in, and we're, uh, we still have enough to do another eight months. We're halfway through the month. Mm -hmm. Like 70K, about. Yeah, exactly. Chief, a philosophical question here. So, this focus on prevention, or proactivity rather. Uh, seems to have yielded some pretty good results. You reaffirmed that. Uh, what's to stop you from taking, for example, more of Jose's guys and, and diverting them towards that kind of proactive approach if it, if it gets such great results? Our officers are proactive as much as they're allowed to be in terms of the amount of time they have. We still have calls for service coming in, but I think last week I looked and our officers in field services produced around 250 misdemeanor enforcement activities a vast majority of those are individuals uh, uh, quality of life issues that they were able to enforce so our field is very proactive our traffic unit is on pace for a record-breaking 80,000 traffic citations uh, they're very proactive uh, all this downtown uh, team project assisted us in a big part of it was we brought in officers on overtime, which enabled, which created more time for them to fo solely focus on being proactive downtown. I'd love to do this across the city, but we run out of officers and we run out of time. And uh, the last stat is the field services between calls and during calls last week, 137 new charge felony arrests. That is a lot of arrests that our officers are doing that they're proactive about. But it, 
it, but it's a policy choice to say to an officer, okay, you are going to be proactive now, and you, you're going to answer calls. Why do you think this calculus that you've got right now, where we've got, I don't know, the equivalent of one full-time equivalent and some change uh, on, on teams, why do you think this is the right one? And, you know, if it's getting such great results, shouldn't we throw a couple more FTEs at it? I can try this one if you want. So, first off, we're always interested in more FTEs. So, we think like that every day. The difference is these are specialized units. So I think maybe what was missed, right? When we say we were doing traffic stops, that's the traffic unit who's specialized in this. When we say we're doing undercover narcotics works in bars, that's not plain clothes or uh, uniformed field officers. So the difference is we're using overtime for specialized units who also are doing these specialized tasks. So you can't swap them out one for one, even with respect to their ability and the uniform or lack of a uniform, the fact that they're undercover. Yeah, the one thing also to remember is the calls still need to be answered. We just improved our response times. Uh, we did media about that last week. And in order for us to make more people proactive, those officers have to come from somewhere. And it's just a matter of, can we slice the pie anymore? And a lot of times we eliminated certain aspects of Chiefs overtime to ensure that this one would get filled. So it's a balancing act, and I absolutely agree. The more proactive we could get, the better off we're going to be. And it's a matter of us making sure that we continue to find ways to get people proactive. Does that answer your question? All right. Other questions? No more. It's hot. Everyone needs a break from the heat. All right. Thanks, guys. All right.